This is the Digital Formula Podcast, a show about digital transformations, why they fail and how you can apply the formula to ensure that your transformation program will create the expected results by aligning your services to your strategy, architect solutions well, and deliver them in an agile fashion. Welcome to episode four of the Digital Formula Podcast. Uh, my name is Roland Volt, and today I'm going to joined, as always, by my co-host, Mike Eigengren. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Hey, Roland. Great to be back. Yeah, it seems that we get a little hang on doing those recordings. Yeah, yeah. Fourth one in. <laughs> yeah, fourth Yeah. Fourth one is a charm. Uh, obviously, it's also a charm because today's topic that we're going to talk about is IT service management. And uh, we do have Jim Baranowski here uh, as our resident ITSM expert. Jim, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Roland. Appreciate it. Uh, it's great to be here. And we're happy to have you. Um, so, Jim, before we go into talking about uh, ITSM, which we will do obviously at nauseum, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, so that our audience get to know you a little bit better. Who are you? What have you done in the past? Uh, what were your experience? What are your bucket list items? So just a little walkthrough of who's Jim? All right. Yeah, sure thing. So, uh, so from the person perspective, uh, you know, I'm a husband, I'm a dad, um, and surprisingly, I'm an assistant boxing coach for my, my kids' boxing team. Uh, interestingly enough, I was even a, a boxing announcer for, for some of our uh, gym matches. So I'm the guy saying, you know, in the red corner, uh, you know, and the winner is, you know, I'm, I'm that guy, which mm -hmm. is crazy to think about. Um, you know, I'm also a PC gaming geek, so uh, anybody that's worked with me can tell you I, I tried to uh, recruit folks to jump into games with me. So uh, so that's me from a personal perspective. Um, from the professional perspective, I'm the director of digital IT services at LSA, um, and I have uh, 25 years of combined industry and uh, consulting experience. And I'm going to walk through every single job I had since 1995 to make this conversation super interesting. Oh, yeah. For uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'll keep it scoped to the topic, uh, and we can cover the 5 million jobs that I've had uh, at some other episode. People can, um, people can read your LinkedIn profile. Jim, I'm pretty sure you have it listed diligently over there. <laughs> uh, oh, I sure do. <laughs> so, um, so I've been I've been working in ITSM since around 2007, which is like crazy to think about. It's been it's been like 15 over 15 years already. So so time flies. Um, you know, I, I started in the role of a, a process owner, a process manager for release management, change management, and software configuration management at a large. Uh, Pharmacy benefits manager, um, you know that's where I developed and, and managed ITSM processes for the first time. So I basically, you know, got the taste of you know what it's like to handle ITSM processes and the day to day challenges that that come with it. So, um, you know, that's one of the things I think helps a lot when I work with clients is you know if they did look at my LinkedIn profile, they know I've been there. You know, they, they mm -hmm. hopefully know I understand their day to day challenges. Right. So mm -hmm. so that that helps a lot. Um, after that, I joined an international communications and IT company that that mainly operates in the federal market. Uh, once again, I was a process owner, process manager for change management, configuration management, release management. Um, I was also the backup major incident manager. And I'll tell you at. Uh, 2 a.m. That's quite an interesting job to be the backup for. So, uh, good times right there. Um, you know, another interesting aspect of that role, though, was that that's where we helped maintain the ISO 20,000 certification for the company. And and for those that aren't really familiar with ISO 20,000, if you think of ITIL certs as certifications for uh, people showing that they know ITIL. You could think of ISO 20000 as a cert showing that the company knows how to implement and manage ITIL. So that was a great experience. That's really where we dug in deep with auditing and, you know, controls and, and, and things like that. Um, then after that, I was, uh, in, you know, in 2013, I was lucky enough to be able to join KPMG, you know, one of the big four audit tax and advisory firms. And uh, coincidentally, that's where I met you both. Right. So. Um, you know, at KPMG, I really expanded my ITSM knowledge, right? Like, um, 
you dig deep um, and you gain an amazing amount of experience helping Fortune 500 companies implement ITSM, uh, ServiceNow, you know, not just ITSM and ServiceNow, but for this conversation, I'm, you know, kind of focusing in on that. Um, you know, I, I started as a senior associate and, and worked my way up to director while there. Um, and along that that journey, you know, I've been really lucky to meet a lot of amazing people. Um, you know, and, and to this day, I really value my, my network and, and rely on them. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example of, of how important uh, having a great network is. You know, while at KPMG, uh, I ended up receiving a call uh, by a former KPMG colleague, uh, somebody that's on this call right now, uh, Mike Eidengren. Um, you know, it, it, he asked if I'd be interested in uh, building my own ITSM and, and ServiceNow practice. And so obviously those opportunities don't come around very often, right? So I, I definitely couldn't pass that up. So so that's what I'm doing now, you know, uh, building and, and leading the uh, ServiceNow ITSM uh, type of practice. So that's that's about it for me. Ho hopefully everybody's still awake while they're uh, <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> okay. So, Jim, thank you so much for that intro. It's uh, you, You've been all over the place and done a lot of great things. It's cool. Um, we want to hear a little bit more about what ITSM is and, and how it can help organizations. Yeah, sure thing, Mike. So, so basically... Uh, at its core, ITSM is all about ensuring an organization's IT services meet the needs of its customers' employees, right? Um, you could think of ITSM as the bridge between technology and its users. Uh, it, it's not just about fixing computers or resetting passwords, although it, it, it does handle that. But at a higher level, it's about delivering and managing IT services in a, in a way that supports the organization's goals. Um, it, let, let's dig a bit deeper into that. So if you Google ITSM, um, you know, one of the first images that comes up is, is what we're looking at here. Um, and, and I really like this image. Um, it, it, it cleanly depicts the processes and, and practices involved in ITSM. I'll, I'll quickly touch on, you know, the key things and, and basically give a general definition uh, to get an idea of what they're about and, and hopefully some you know, and hopefully some easy to understand examples. Um, so if, if we start off there, you'll notice you, you see service desk, right? So you could think of the service desk as the front line for IT or like the primary contact for, for issues that you're experiencing. Um, they're the team you chat with when you're, when you're having technical issues. Uh, their goal is is basically help you get it back on track quickly. So I, I think you know many of the uh, viewers probably experienced that, right? You you call the service desk, you get into the queue, and you know hopefully wait your forty five minutes. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah hopefully you don't wait forty five <laughs> minutes, or you go through about fifteen. Press one if oh. it's this issue. Press two. Yeah, that's that's always fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> so. yeah. And if you if you if you pay within the next thirty seconds, you get three steak knives for free. <laughs> nice nice <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, so so that's the service desk right uh, the service desk basically what they operate in is that that next uh segment there is incident management so they're in incident management quite a bit um so what's incident management so incident management is basically when something breaks or is not working as it should that's where incident management steps in that's that process that that manages that you know, it's and it's also all about quickly getting services uh, running smoothly again. So they they kind of go hand in hand, right? Um, the next yeah, that's one interesting. there. Um, so that's interesting that you talk about the incident management related to the services. You didn't say computers, and you didn't say yeah. my browser. You said services, and I'm I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about how how we take that service based approach a little bit later with you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure thing, Mike. Um, yeah, and, and that's one of the things too, um, you know, we, we could circle back to the service desk topic, you know, they also operate within, and I'm going to be getting to this, but within request fulfillment as well. So, uh, so yeah, there's definitely a tight tie in there. Um, if we dig deeper than incident management, we go to that next, uh, segment there, basically, you know, there's, that's where problem management is. Uh, so problem basically does a deep dive to analyze reoccurring issues or incidents as an example. So you get a repeat incident, 
you wonder why. Every Friday at 3 o'clock, this particular application goes down. Well, let's look into that. Why? Let's figure out that root cause. And while it's down, is there a workaround that folks can use? So that's really what problem management is about. Um, that next segment um, is change management. So uh, as you, you heard in my uh, initial intro, uh, I was a change manager at multiple companies, uh, Fortune 500 companies. So change is a bit near and dear to my heart. Um, so uh, change is, is all about minimizing the risk of IT changes. Um, you know, every time you introduce a change into production, as an example, that, that increases the risk. So it's all about reducing that risk when you implement changes. The other thing is it's ensuring that you have a successful implementation of the changes, you know, or you're implementing new services or you're updating a system or service. That's really what change is, the, is about. And I, I like to think of it as like protecting the IT environment from that risk of changes. Um, you know, some of the admins may have other uh, ways of describing change management. Uh, they, they, they certainly don't enjoy filling out change tickets. I, I will tell you that. <laughs> so so um, the next one is uh, asset management. So asset management ensures there are, um, you know, that assets, surprisingly, are, are properly tracked and maintained. It's, it's basically to help understand which asset is where, who owns it the assets end of life, you know, things like that. So that's a pretty straightforward concept. I think I think a lot of people kind of get that pretty quickly. And we're talking about, we're talking not about uh, only software. We also obviously talk about cables and boxes, you know, physical stuff. Yeah, that that's a good point, Roland. So you'll often hear in the industry, you know, ITAM, IT Asset Management. You know, well, what is that? If you dig down, you have software asset management, you have hardware asset management or SAM or HAM. So yeah, definitely. That mm -hmm. includes software, that includes hardware. So yeah, great point. Um, that next segment, that's basically knowledge, policy and procedure. So really, this is a straightforward concept. It, it's all about managing I, the IT organization's knowledge in a, you know, basically to provide things like how-to knowledge articles for end users. So they can get the information they need quickly um, so they can handle their issue uh, and get back to work as quickly as possible. Um, but on the other side of that, though, though too, is it helps IT. Um, it, it basically gives them, you know, guided documentation to help resolve incidents quicker. Right? You don't want to recreate the wheel every time a, an incident pops up. If somebody's handled this in the past, why not document that and walk through the steps to quickly resolve it, right? That, that's really what in knowledge management's about. So, Jim, I, I hear there's a new thing, a new technology out there everyone's talking about called artificial intelligence. And <laughs> it's I all think fake you have Mike. a... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think you have some, a thing or two to say about putting this knowledge and, and procedures you just discussed in front of people at a re, in a really timely way so they can make better decisions. I think you're going to talk about that later on, aren't you? Yeah, Mike, it's almost like you've read the script to this. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, Incredible. It's, I, it, I know the, the way that you came up with that. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Mike. That, that's one of the things we're going to go through. Um, you know, a little bit later in the podcast, I'll talk through how to make that real. How, how do you use uh, AI, Gen AI, uh, within ITSM? And, and honestly... Um, you know, I've seen it in person. I've seen it work. I've seen it firsthand, and it's it's really cool. So I'll, I'll do like the typical podcast things. It's like, yeah, we'll get back to that in a minute. But first, uh, mm -hmm. you know, let let's go through this stuff. Uh, so so yeah, it's um, if we if we go circle back to that uh, diagram. Um, so that the next thing is service catalog. Um, so you could think of service catalog like a menu of IT services, if you will. Uh, basically, services that you can request. So that service catalog is where you go to order what you need from IT. It could be you're ordering a service. It could be you're ordering a product. Most of the time when I work with folks that are new to ITSM, service catalog is, is a really simple concept that they, they buy into quickly because, you know, almost everybody's ordered from Amazon, right? So it's, it's similar to like an Amazon experience. Um, the next one is uh, service strategy. So service strategies where long-term planning occurs. So 
that's essentially aligning IT services with business objectives. And I'll get into why that's important a little bit later. But that's a key aspect of ISDSM because you really want to make sure you, you know where you're going with this. You don't want to blindly take that journey, right? So, um, Jim, um, when you say service catalog, I mean, it sounds like we're just like ordering Amazon, like ordering a mouse from IT, right? Yeah. Um, but could it be more complicated? Like, uh, hey, we might order a, a new cloud environment for a project we're spinning up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things, Mike, that ITSM has had to make sure uh, that it keeps up with. Right. You know, as as cloud computing gets bigger and bigger, uh, you need to be able to be agile when when you order things. Right. Your customer doesn't want to wait 30 days, 60 days for a new server instance to pop up. So how do you do that? You, you integrate, right? You, you integrate with AWS, you integrate with Azure, um, and then with a few clicks of a button, you fill out a form, it gets routed for approval, and magically now you have your server instance. So, so yeah, that's a great point. So Jim, that sounds like a very comprehensive um, menu of, I don't, don't want to say Chinese menu, but a menu of uh, things that people can do in IT when it comes to the operational side, you know, to run it. So not obviously necessarily development and all those things, but I'm pretty sure it's connected. Um, can you give us some examples how IT service management can make a difference? You know, black and white, this is good, this is bad, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah, Absolutely. So, you know, it's interesting you bring up an app because that's a, that's a great example. Um, let's say a company does launch a new app. So ITSM processes and ensure that that app's reliable, it's user-friendly, it continues to meet the user's needs over time. That, that's where the concepts of service design, service level agreements, continual service improvement come into play. Um, also, if something breaks, right, and, and you get an error in the app or you simply can't access that app as an example, ITSM is there to help resolve those incidents um, through incident, man that incident management process like we just talked about, mm -hmm. um, ultimately minimizing the downtime of that app. And, you know, believe me, everybody hates downtime, right? So everybody should really love ITSM as much as I do. That's, that's what I think. So uh, uh, another example is remote work, right? So holding meetings on Teams or Zoom like many of us are on almost every day. Everybody loves daily meetings, uh, especially with cameras on, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll joke in aside, you know, they're legitimately critical services. Um, and ITSM is there to make sure they're available 24-7. So if there's an issue, ITSM, ITSM is there to quickly troubleshoot. Um, so if we think about it, basically with good incident trend analysis, good problem management practices, you can solve the uh, customer issues even before you know they have them. So, Jim, that's uh, that's uh, some pretty cool examples. So how do organizations really get started with ITSM? You know, even if they've already tried to go down the path or they've got a little bit of a start going already. Yeah, that, that's a great question, Mike. So, you know, I get that question quite a bit when I work with clients. Uh, you know, how, how do we get started here? So I'll walk through that. So so basically to either take the first steps in ITSM um, or you know, oftentimes, even if you have ITSM already in place, you want to opt and you just want to optimize existing practices, right? You should start by scaling that approach. You don't want to jump headfirst into the deep end. Oftentimes, you got to really understand your organization uh, before, before you go in and, and jump in and understand what they're ready for. You know, I found that a good starting point is to, to, to jump in, do an assessment of your organization get a good read of where your organization's at. You know, I've worked with clients that were super advanced. Um, their IT teams were were very experienced in ITSM. Well, then now we can scale that up and, and add some more advanced uh, ITSM processes. I've also had clients that are very low maturity. Uh, they're, they basically are barely understanding ITSM. So then right now, you got to get them comfortable. You start at that beginning, you scale it up for them. The key is, under, like I said before, right? Like the key is to understand where the organization is and where it wants to be. After you understand that, oh, Roland, you had a question? No, well, I, I just want to put a comment in there when you talk about the maturity, right? Because um, not everybody needs to buy the big guns, 
right? When, when it comes to tooling, right? So th there's a difference between the process that you do and the tools that support it. So I, I think there's a certain bandwidth of tools that are available to get you started. And then once you grow, you might, and we had that in the conversation with Hari about processes, you might then mature into a larger enterprise-wide system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I agree, right? Like, it's not only technology, but even with processes, like, like, like you said. So it's essentially, you don't want to put a big, heavy process on an organization that is not ready for it. What will happen is uh, people will figure out ways around it. Um, so you got to get that right level for that organization. And, you know, like I was saying is basically you can do that through an assessment as an example, right? You, you can have an ITSM professional come in, do an assessment. Doesn't have to be a long assessment, right? They'll be able to get a read pretty quickly of where your organization's at. Um, it, that basically would drive the strategy, right? Which then informs the processes that need to be developed or, or optimized. Um, another thing that's that's really important in, in choosing the right tools, like you were talking about, Roland, is that um, if you think about it, they're the things that are going to execute your process. Um, and as you mentioned, there's multiple tools out there. And the most common ITSM platforms that I see in the market are ServiceNow and Jira Service Management. Two great tools, right? Um, and to your point, you know, uh, depending on what organizational goals there are, one tool may be suited, better suited than the other. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I think it's really important to know where you are and where you want to be. So um, the next important piece are the rules of engagement and governance. This is where, you know, th this is basically what sets the boundaries and guidelines for how ITSM is practiced within an organization. I say, I'd say basically for those starting out and adopting, you know, basically adopting a framework like ITIL in a non-dogmatic way. And I really want to stress how important it is to be non-dogmatic with ITIL. Um, it's a framework, right? It's not meant to be super prescriptive. Uh, but over the years, I've seen people super excited about ITIL try to implement it like it's very prescriptive. And by doing so, like from my experience, I found that they tend to lose sight of what's important. So you just got to, um, so, when you say non-dogmatic, you mean we just really got to focus on what are the priorities of that organization? What are the things that make it different? Right? We can't just, you know, go by the book. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Mike. And, and the other thing is oftentimes those folks that implement it very, in a very prescriptive way, they're not thinking of the customer experience. They're not thinking of the user experience. Um, and what ends up happening is oftentimes the process just feels cumbersome and, and clunky. So um, you basically just need that right amount of governance. You got to have a balance. So you obviously reduce the risk, right? But you also have to maintain that agility and, and frankly, the customer and user experience. Um, it, it, it's also really about changing the culture to, to prioritize continuous improvement and, and customer satisfaction. You can't just implement it, then forget about it. Hey, yeah, great. We implemented ITEL and then go walk away. No, you, you can't. You can't really do that. Um, ITSM requires uh, what some may call care and feeding, what others may call mindful monitoring or management, depending uh, on how extravagant your vocabulary is. Uh, you know, you, you got to really give these processes care and feeding. So you, you monitor them, and you basically make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do with, with smart metrics. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. And, and maybe just a little summary to see if I understood it correctly. So basically you uh, look at your strategy, where do you want to go after the assessment? You look at the processes, right? The ITIL framework might be helpful with that, be non-dogmatic. You choose the, the tool that is fit for purpose uh, that you use, and then you define the rules of engagement, uh, how things should be running. And then you you monitor and observe what's going on and you have some continuous improvement. Is that pretty much the, the way how you see it? You nailed it, Roland. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, hey, that was excellent. That's the first time I hear that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with that, we're, we're a little bit over halftime of the show already. So time flies when you have fun. Um, oh, yeah. But we obviously want to give our listeners a little break in between. Play a little bit uh, short music and uh, make you think about, well, how do you manage your IT processes, your IT services in your organization? Is it a pleasant experience, like Jim said, or is it more cumbersome and, and annoying? Um, and how can ITSM help you with that? 
Uh, we leave you alone for a couple of seconds and we see each other after this. Are you ready to supercharge your team with Scaled Agile? Hi, I'm Christy from Lean Scaled Architects, or E-Architect Outcomes. We're here to transform your team into a powerhouse of efficiency and innovation. Unlock your potential with safe training, starting soon. Dive into architecture, March 26th through 28th. Master product management on April 3rd and 4th. Become a scrum master on April 9th and 10th. Or lead the change on April 16th and 17th. It's a power-packed four weeks. Don't miss out. Jump in at leanscaledarchitects.com backslash safe dash training or email us at info at leanscaledarchitects.com. Let's innovate together. All right. Thanks. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so, so, Jim, that was a really insightful um, learning session about what ITSM does, how it can help our organizations. Uh, in the next part, we'd like to talk a little bit about especially focusing on this 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 new technology artificial intelligence gen ai um and and how we can kind of keep up with the technology keep up with that technology in the itsm realm so first question up is um how, with that technology constantly evolving how does itsm keep up yeah yeah that that's another great question mike so Essentially, I've been I've been helping organizations with ITSM for for quite some time now. Um, you know, ten of those years included implementing best in class platforms like ServiceNow, and and I could tell you, ITSM is definitely not static. Um, it's evolved quite a bit over the years, and it and it basically evolves right along with technology like Gen AI. Um, <clears throat> I won't just talk about that from a high level, right? Let Let's talk about a pretty clear example of that. Nowadays, like like you mentioned. Uh, or basically indicated nowadays you can't go on LinkedIn without seeing a post on your feed about Gen AI and how it's going to change the world. Um, as we learn more about it, you know, learn more about AI, learn more about machine learning, learn more about cloud computing, ITSM adapts to incorporate those types of things. And, and I'll tell you who I think is doing a great job of evolving ITSM and that's ServiceNow. Um, a good example of integrating AI and ITSM is ServiceNow's Gen AI solution. Um, it's called Now Assist. So I've seen it firsthand and, and not only is it really cool, it's, it's super helpful. So ServiceNow is using AI to not only increase productivity, but, but truly transform user and customer experiences. I know that sounds like a cliched marketing statement, but it's real, right? Like I've seen it. Uh, and I'll give you a real world example of that. So let, let's talk about how Now Assist helps with something as fundamental as uh, agents handling incidents and cases. And, you know, this image here is is basically just a, a screen capture of, you know, an interaction in ServiceNow. And that highlighted red box is showing what AI is doing. And I'll, and I'll talk about that a little bit. So you often hear these things referred to as tickets. Um, but Now Assist basically helps agents more efficiently with what they call task summarizations, and we'll walk through that. So um, essentially, when you go through virtual agent chats, you'll sometimes refer to them as like chat bots. They're transferred to a live agent, right? So your previous interaction could have a ton of information, and it's just too much for that agent to really read quickly. Um, so basically, Gen AI jumps in, um, and that's where it jumps in and assists and it quickly summarizes all those previous details and actions taken. So that agent doesn't have to read the ton of uh, information to be able to quickly ramp up. Um, it sounds like a, a simple ad, right? But if you think about how many incidents or interactions agents have with customers throughout the year, that's a huge impact. Um, you know, another, another example, um, uh, let's say we dig a little deeper. It's a bigger outage. It's a major incident. Um, it's a widespread outage, right? It also jumps in there. It being now assisted, it jumps in there to summarize, you know, for all of those team members who are brought in to try to remediate that MI, it'll give them a quick summary. So it, it basically gives them a quick at a glance, intelligent summary. That's a key word, intelligent. So it doesn't just repeat all the language that was in there. It intelligently summarizes it for them. That's a huge time saver. So, you know, basically, I just gave some really quick examples, but I, th I think those are quick, easy examples to, to wrap your head around, right? 
So, so I think we've all had that chat bot mm-hmm. AI experience. And we said, nope, I don't want to talk to yeah. some robot. I just want to talk to a person. But the cool thing I didn't realize was that AI can make it so that that person is now equipped to give me mm-hmm. a faster answer to extract some of that, some of that time to get some of that time back that might have, I might have not valued, mm-hmm. might have wasted yeah. with the robot. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. a good point, Mike. And, and it goes back to what we talked about earlier. The, the whole goal is to get people to back to work more quickly. And this is just one of those tools that'll do that. Yeah, but that is that is the, I don't know how to say that, the, the front end perspective of it, you know, the, the user mm-hmm. perspective. I'm pretty sure there's also AI being used in the back end, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, thinking about whatever monitoring, analyzing what the technology does, is that is that a reality today or is that still a pipe dream for um, ITSM vendors? Yeah, that that's interesting, Roland, that you bring it up as like a pipe dream, you know, being in ITSM for a really long time. Uh, that was always that holy grail that we're going after, right? Um, and it was always very challenging. Well, AI is making that a little bit easier now. So, so one area where it's making it easier and, and basically making a big difference is through anomaly detection and autonomous resolution. It sounds fancy, but I'll, I'll get into that. Um, it catches those out of the ordinary patterns that that could signal an issue in IT infrastructure, as an example. Mm-hmm. So ServiceNow, yeah. So so like ServiceNow, along with other sophisticated ITSM tools, I'm just using ServiceNow as an example. There are other tools like I, like I talked about, um, but just using ServiceNow as the example, you know, they use a- AI to constantly scan for these types of anomalies. So basically AI or ML, so machine learning, helps by analyzing data trends and spotting things that people probably couldn't. We can only handle so much data, right? So you know, AI can handle a lot more and they'll be able to spot those patterns a lot more easily. And then it alerts the responsible person to say, hey, have a look at this. Is that how it works? Well, it it does, but it even goes beyond that. Mm -hmm. So like what you're talking about with anomaly detection, that's just scratching the surface. You know, it goes a lot deeper. So if with the right algorithms in place, right, like that's really important. With the right algorithms in place, AI can execute predefined remediation processes, like restarting a server when it detects a critical failure, or even even more broadly, rerouting traffic to maintain network performance. But the but the true power of AI in ITSM is in its capacity for autonomous resolution. Um, and, and what's that mean? That means like things like correcting errors, applying patches, updating configurations, all without human intervention. Now, I was a change manager, so that gives me quite a bit of anxiety thinking about uh, <laughs> AI doing things on its own, right? But before my fellow IT change managers potentially revolt over this, I'm saying this saying that obviously these things need to be well thought out with potential risks in mind, with the right controls in place. But but hopefully that idea gives you an idea, you know, that idea gives you, an, I was going to say an idea uh, of where we can go uh, with ITSM. Well, Jim, it, it seems that ITSM is then on the critical path for any IT organization or any organization in general, you know, who has ambitions to stay competitive and, and efficient. Do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? And I'm looking at our little stopwatch here. Uh, any final thoughts for our listeners about what to look for when they uh, get their toes wet um, it- thinking about ITSM? Yeah, for sure. And, th- and this is one piece I'm glad we still have time for because uh, it's really a critical piece. And that's something that's really what what I found is is overlooked oftentimes in that excitement for this new ITSM transformation. If anybody's excited about an ITSM transformation, um, <laughs> I well, you yeah, are yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get excited, but I'm a geek, right? Like so. <laughs> um, but you'll, you'll also, so it basically this really critical thing is, is you'll hear it called OCM, right? Organizational change management. You'll also hear it called learning and adoption. So uh, it, it's that. Uh, in my years of experience of implementing ITSM, one pattern has been consistent. Those clients that prioritize OCM throughout the project, they, they see a more fruitful adoption because it's, it's really about bringing people on board, getting that buy-in, nurturing a shared vision of the benefits, right? Um, without OCM, you really don't have that. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, it, it, in, in OCM, what is it? It's, it's really just about clear communication and training. 
that that resonates with users. Um, you answer that important question of, well, what's in it for me? Everybody wants to know what's in it for them, right? Um, it makes them feel more comfortable. At one point, um, you know, it, it, I really want to drive this home. Like OCM shouldn't just be an afterthought. It should be woven throughout the project, not just at launch. Yeah. Like, like oftentimes, I've, and, that, and that's what I've seen. Hey, yeah, we're doing OCM. We're going to send out communications that we launched. Today, we're doing launch. Uh, congratulations, everybody. Well, those that didn't get the proper training or communications ahead of time might be surprised by it. They might not know what's even going on. And they, they sure as heck don't know what's in it for them. Yeah. Um, you know, that's interesting, Jim. So, so far, you've talked about the technology, ServiceNow, and Gen AI. We've talked about the people being able to to adopt it through OCM, Organization Change Management. And we talked about the process, for example, with ITIL, doing all that so we can have a better user experience and customer experience, both with people who are calling us up for services, for the agents who are helping people have those services, and maybe even for the service providers who are who might not know something's broken and might help get notification mm -hmm. faster that something's yep. broken, right? So, man, if there were only a formula that tied all that <laughs> stuff together, it'd be really oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go back to apps. Go go back to apps. A digital one formula. And, and listen to what you said there. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, Jim, um, thanks for for being a guest on the show. I think it was very enlightening. You know, we were talking about what is IT service management. You were walking us through the, the, the four different things you should look at when implementing it, you know, strategy and processes and, uh, and so on and so forth. And then you gave us a little outlook on, hey, where's the future? And the, the most important point for me, because I have a little soft spot in my, my dark coley heart, you know, for organizational <laughs> change management, because I think it's, um, and I say that over and over again, it doesn't matter how many wallpapers you put on the wall, you know, processes, it doesn't matter how many black boxes you put in the basement, you know, IT, if the person um, in front of the computer doesn't want to do it, they don't do it, right? So definitely important to say, okay, how do we bring um, people along the way? But that might be something for another episode in the future, uh, which I would really appreciate uh, if we have the time for that. Um, but for now, um, obviously, the, the burning question that everybody has who has made it to this point in the episode is, well, how can I reach out to that gym guy? I'd, I'd like to, to chat with him about ITSM. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully, as it came through the podcast, I love talking about ITSM and I'm super passionate about it. So if anyone on watching this podcast wants to connect with me, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to discuss it further, right? Like I, I think Roland, you mentioned that my contact information will be posted with the contact. Yeah. I mean, with the uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, and then that another good way to contact me is like through my LinkedIn, and I think that's going to be posted as well. But one of the things that I really want to jump into is I'm going to be at the ServiceNow Knowledge Event uh, May seventh through the 9th. So if you're there. You know, reach out. I'd be, I'd love to connect in person to chat about this as well. And that is almost the perfect conclusion of our podcast today. So again, thanks, Jim, for being on the show as our guest. Uh, I'm pretty sure you won over a couple of listeners who thought, uh, who are thinking now, well, I need to have a deeper look into this ITSM topic as well. Uh, and with that, um, I'd like to thank you, everybody listening. Uh, to the show. I wish you a very nice day and I hope I can see you in the next one. Bye.